Oh, we got to go to that. This time, a false alarm. That wasn't gunshots, right? It was just fire. I don't think so. I think that was like fireworks. The North Philadelphia police officer Stephen Viverina and Michael Wolf don't wonder if more violence will erupt. The question is when. And you know it's going to come. Absolutely. That constant concern in the city's Kensington neighborhood means other problems can fester until almost too late. You want to grab his other arm? Help me out. This man overdoses head in the street. Thankfully, the Narcan works. They said as far as those kinds of situations go, that's actually pretty good because he went to the hospital to get help. Kensington can't hide what police tell us is a multi-million dollar drug problem. It's not even heroin anymore. It's just straight up fentanyl. We're driving by what's called Needle Park. We've seen people with needles in hand. So, you know, with um, the manpower situation that we have, if we allocate most of our time to, you know, be able to go out and confiscate any illegal narcotics, basically that's going to eliminate us two from the streets for a few hours. They let other teams focus on drugs. Instead, these officers respond to an alleged attempted stabbing. There's a child at the scene. And on the next shift, a young boy apparently wanders by himself after 1 a.m. And uh, appears the boy has been reunited with his family, but to think about a young child standing out on these streets in the middle of the night, based on everything we've seen in the area, it's really tough to think about. That child found by a man searching for his own 22-year-old son. When you walk through here, drive through here, and you just see what we see under the L tracks here, yeah. what goes through your mind? Sadness. Sadness. As a parent, what goes through your mind? Hurt. Like, I don't know how, I, now that I'm going through it, I don't know how parents, you know, I don't know how they deal with it like, on a daily basis. Worrying about their kid up there, you know, could be dead. You know what I mean? Jail, who knows? We got to pick a lifeless body up and make sure that we get them the help that they need as fast as possible so that we could try to preserve life. In a community where sometimes drugs and guns collide. The gun problem meets the drug problem when, you know, certain drug corners might be operated by a small group of people that run that organization. They may have a problem with another organization that's nearby. You know, I mean, the whole time you guys were with us, no major incidents happened. People didn't get hurt. Um, no cops got hurt. Um, as long as no citizens got hurt. Um, you know, that wasn't the case before four o'clock when you got there and we had five people shot. Jesse Kirsch joins us now from Philadelphia. So Jesse, this has become routine for two officers over one evening in a city that's having much broader issues. Is that right? That's right, Savannah. According to the latest city data, at least 269 people have been shot and killed in Philadelphia so far this year. More than 1,000 other people have also been shot but have survived, according to that city data. And the city of Philadelphia's tracking of violence says that there have been nearly 300 homicides overall, so nearly 300 people overall who have been killed in Philadelphia so far this year. They say that's a 2 percent decrease from 2021, but again, that is still close to 300 lives lost. All of this happening in the same city as what is behind me, Independence Hall, the birthplace of American democracy, where the Declaration of Independence was signed so many years ago. And all of those scenes we showed you from Saturday night into early Sunday, those heartbreaking scenes, all of that happening just miles from where we are now. Savannah. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.